Good morning, I'm David Kyle, filling in for Pastor Muller. Uh, he was a, is attending a family reunion in the great state of Michigan, and uh, plans on being back here next Sunday in good shape and good spirits. This is the 11th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. It used to be the season of Trinity, and then they changed it over to Pentecost, but they kept the same color, which is green, so for life and vitality. We come together this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Confession of sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We say together, Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and things left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for today is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. Elijah came to a cave where he spent the night. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces. But the Lord was not in wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return to Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes from the word of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The epistle lesson for today is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses wrote that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all its commands. But the way of getting with God is through faith. You don't need to go to heaven to find Christ and bring him down to you, nor go to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. Salvation comes from trusting Christ, which is the message we preach, is always within easy reach. In fact, scripture says the message is close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. But how can they call upon him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is what the scripture means when they say, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The gospel reading for this day is in the, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning with the 22nd verse. 
Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000 people, and he sent his disciples, as this indicates, away, sent the crowds away so that he could spend some time with his heavenly Father. So the gospel reading, verse 22. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up a mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. Early in the morning, he came, walking toward them on the sea. They were terrified, screaming, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them. He said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. We pray, Lord, bless our time together as we concentrate on your word, open our hearts and minds to your spirit, that we may be inspired and taught, encouraged, chastised, lifted up, and sent on our way rejoicing. In his name we pray, amen. The title for the sermon could be Fear and Courage. The question then comes, why do we need courage? That's for heroes and those in high-risk, dangerous occupations. We don't need courage in our sedate, routine lives. Or do we? Well, we're not about to walk on water, especially in the middle of a storm. Yet, as Christians, we need courage if we are to be faithful to God. We need God's help to overcome our fear and maintain our confession that Jesus is indeed our Lord and Savior. Jesus deliberately sent the, sent the disciples on ahead. He wanted to be by himself in prayer, touching base with his Heavenly Father. He also probably wanted to see their level of confidence in his care especially when they were separated from him and confronted by a crisis, the storm. Sure enough, they ended up in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, buffeted by waves and wind. And Jesus came to them, but in a way that caused them to be even more afraid. Jesus assured them he was real. Peter tested that assurance in his usual impulsive, dramatic way by climbing out of the boat and walking to Jesus. Why did he do that? I don't know. I suppose we can make some guesses. Maybe he had not outgrown his, his male adolescence. He might have said, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I really didn't think through the consequences. Maybe impulsively he just wanted to be near his Lord, knowing that in Jesus he could find safety. The problem is he takes his eyes off of Jesus and he looks at the ways around him realizes that he's never done this before and he could get swamped very easily and drowned. And he's terrified, cries out to Jesus, and Jesus rescues him. Disciples concluded from the strange events that Jesus was the Son of God. It's instructed to remember, though, that they continued in their, in their, to ride the roller coaster of faith and doubt, never fully co comprehending Jesus' divinity until after his resurrection and ascension. So what can we learn? We learn that we need courage to follow Jesus, to walk by faith. We learn that we can trust Jesus to do what is best for us, no matter how little or how much faith we have. Because we experience storms in our lives, things that make us afraid, that overwhelm us, that confound us, that threaten us. Emotional trauma and grief and unemployment and 
family issues and illness and accidents. And they're all part of our human existence. We can't avoid them. They're just there, causing us pain and grief and heartache. And as we deal with all these issues, we realize that our own resources of strength and patience and hope are not always adequate. We need somebody else to come alongside and enable us to overcome, to keep our head above water, to reach out a hand to us and lift us up and walk us alongside with us. And that friend becomes Jesus. Jesus who enables us to cope and stay courageous and endure and overcome. There's going to be an alarming realization at this point. Like the disciples, we can feel separated from God at times. The Old Testament reading is from Job, where God challenges Job. Because Job is questioning God. And God is expecting Job to accept what is happening in his life because God is allowing it to happen. And to a great extent, Job does, but he still questions what's happening to him, thinking that life is unfair. And it is. We, like Job, are inadequate, unable to cope, when we give up trusting ourselves, we discover that Jesus comes to us. And we need to listen carefully as he calls us to follow him. There's an old story. Farmer quit farming one day, went to the seminary, studying there, having a difficult time with the classes. The professor came to him and said, why did you stop farming? What are you doing here at the seminary? The farmer said, one day out in the field, I noticed that the clouds in the sky were spelling out P.C. And I understood that to be God telling me to preach Christ. And the professor said, well, it could be God was telling you to plant corn. So we need to listen carefully. Be guided by the Holy Spirit. Looking for guidance from others from the Word of God. God comes to us, and He comes through for us, and He keeps His promises, and He provides for us. He's not going to snap His fingers and make everything good, but He will work through our circumstances, no matter what they are, to accomplish His will, to touch the lives of many people. And for that, we can be grateful. Our faith doesn't stop us from having experiences like Peter. We can be at a place in our lives where we are, feel strong and confident of God's leading. And we go ahead saying, I'm walking with God and he will provide for me day by day. And what we're doing is consistent with God's will. And God will bless our efforts, whether as individual believers or as a congregation. But then a disagreements occur. Problems come up. Disappointments pile up when we falter. And we begin to doubt ourselves and God. And we look around us and we wonder what's going on. And we feel like the waves are going to crash around us and take us under. And we don't know what to do. And we take our eyes off Jesus. And he comes to us. And he works through our experiences to accomplish his will for us and our, in his church. We may have to revise our expectations and plans and agenda as he shows us a better way. My grandfather came to Los Angeles in 1912 to set up Lutheran churches for English-speaking people because all the other Lutheran churches of the Missouri Synod in Los Angeles in 1912 used the German language. He came to set up English-speaking uh, churches. Occasionally, his fellow pastors criticized him, saying, you shouldn't start a church there. You shouldn't go there. You shouldn't be doing work over there. And it caused him to stop and reevaluate his plans 
and sometimes to change his plans, and other times to reaffirm his commitment to doing work in that particular area of Los Angeles. It was how God guided him and enabled him to do his work with commitment and courage. Jesus still comes to us at times and chides us, criticizing us and saying, oh, you have little faith. And that's true. Sometimes we just don't have a lot of faith. We doubt God's goodness and power. He's not taking away our pain. He's not dealing with the problems in our lives. And we're wondering if it's worthwhile trying to follow him. And he comes to us and says, why do you doubt? I'm here. I went to the cross for you. I conquered death for you. I am with you. And I will be with you forever. What faces you? Or what challenges do you have in your life? Maybe we think that we get convicted of us by some preacher who says you need to go out and witness to everybody you can find, so we are going to knock on every door in our neighborhood and tell people about Jesus. And we start that, and it goes nowhere fast. Or there's a relationship that is really messed up, full of tension. And we say, Lord, be with me. And we go to that other person and try to talk, speak the truth in love. And we get a door slammed in our face. The other person's not ready. What do we do? We continue to seek God's guidance, seek his care and his help, letting him lift us up letting him give us the courage we need to keep on as he directs us. And so God comes to us day by day, giving us the courage and assurance we need to overcome our fear, our reluctance, and do what needs to be done. He provides for our support in surprising ways sometimes, but always he calls us to take his hand and go with him. As we experience the challenges of walking with Jesus, as we experience the courage that he gives to us day by day, we reach the same conclusion that his first disciples did out there in the lake. Truly, you are the Son of God. And so we commit ourselves to him as we come to believe that we can trust him with our life now and forever. We see his love and forgiveness poured out for us on his cross. We worship him as we experience his gifts of courage and faith. We don't need to be afraid. Jesus comes to us and saves us. May we live in trust and courage day by day. Amen. Now may the grace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We gather in prayer. Almighty God, you laid the foundations of the earth. We give you thanks for your glorious creation. In our sin, we have earned for ourselves death, and your creation has been subjected to futility. Yet in your Son, you grant us forgiveness and new life. Help us to live in righteousness through faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we ask you to raise up pastors and teachers, missionaries and servants for all church work vocations. Bless church planters and new congregations that they may endure and bring hope and renewal to all struggling congregations and to the pastors who serve them. Do not let fear keep us from your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you supported Peter in his doubts and fears. Keep us from sinking into despair when we suffer the trials of this mortal life. Be with those who are in need of your special care. Grant us your spirit that our hearts may not waver and keep us in the grasp of your grace that we may not lose our way or be overcome by weariness and struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, give ear to the prayers of your people. Lead us to trust in your mercy without fear that we may be confident 
that you will grant to us all things needful to us and our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good word from God, the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Some items in your bulletin that you call your attention to, especially the 30-mile mission, and the other items there for your benefit, and block party, and Otto's coffee hour. So take advantage of those events also.